Chapter 29 Noguchi ran through the dark, aware that time was short. She'd heard the explosions only minutes after leaving her battlefield, and knew that the hunters would head for the sight and sound of action. It was surely that suit, Max, and she hoped that the firefight meant Lara and Jess were still alive, that Ellis was protecting them. The trees whipped past, Noguchi concentrating on keeping balanced, on skirting obstacles and keeping her speed up. She didn't want to be left behind. Her fight on Bunda was over, and she was more than ready to be away from the hunt. And the hunters, who wouldn't mind at all if I missed my flight. Noguchi picked up speed, moving faster. The hunter transport was twice as big as the Nemesis shuttle, and looked something like a water pitcher lying on its side, a rounded body tapering at the neck. Jess wouldn't have particularly cared if it looked like a giant dog turd. He'd never been so happy to see anything. The ship had set down in an angled clearing, near the top of a gently sloping hill, the jungle they stepped out of at the bottom. The sky seemed lighter, perhaps because of the open space, or maybe because the endless night was actually ending. They moved into the pale light, away from the trees, Jess grateful to get out of the secretive dark. At least we'll see the next deadly thing coming. He considered crossing his fingers, but thought it might be his undoing, the final exertion that would knock him out cold. He wouldn't be good for much longer. Together, he and Lara struggled to keep up with the Max as it marched easily to the ship, holding Briggs with both arms. Throughout all of it, Briggs still hadn't come out of his post-implant coma. Jess knew that they'd have to leave the exec behind. He'd thought that they could use him if they ran into any company people, but... I'll see about the controls, Lara gasped, breaking into his wandering thoughts as they moved near the vehicle. You get Ellis out of that thing. Jess nodded, suddenly feeling more vulnerable than he had in the wooded jungle. He was afraid of what he would find when he opened the suit. Ellis had referred to himself and the Max as we, before blowing up the band of drones that had come for them, and he'd been an emotional mess already, ever since 949. Jess had been with him for the first interface, and remembered how he'd gradually declined, losing his speech, becoming erratic, losing himself. We'll take care of you, kid. Don't die on us. And don't stop being Ellis. That was the worst of his fears, he knew, even worse than that Ellis might die from the second interface. The thought that Ellis might not be there anymore. That the spark of his character might be gone. No. He'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Jess held on to the thought, determined to believe it. They reached the ship, and it looked even more alien up close. It was made from some light grey material, matte and smooth, not a straight line in sight. Even the hatch was rounded, a giant stretched oval set into the side of the swollen body. Lara reached up and touched a panel next to the door, Jess holding his breath and exhaling as the hatch slid to one side with a soft hum. Inside, it looked more like a transport shuttle, with obvious chairs and a rounded console at the front. It was spacious and empty, and smelled faintly of something sour. Lara moved inside, and Jess turned to Max, standing a few metres away. Even hunter-sized, the door was too small to admit the bulky suit. He'd have to pull Ellis out, and carry him onto the ship. Okay, Ellis, breathe easy. I'm going to... Max raised his rifle arm, pointing it down the hill, cutting Jess short, making him feel sick. Something was coming. It was as if every pain in Jess's body surfaced at once, the full extent of his injury and exhaustion finally letting itself be known. No more, God, no more. Jess turned aching, and saw Machiko Noguchi emerge from the tangle of trees. Max Ellis was safe and warm in the dark, feeling nothing, aware that the small woman was not a threat. They kept the left arm raised anyway, in case she was not alone. She moved quickly up the grade and spoke to Jess, the man, both of them making soft and light sounds, good sounds. She stood and waited for something, her posture expectant. The man moved behind Max Ellis, 
and touch the damaged area of their body. They realised too late what he was doing and tried to tell him no. No, that it was not good. And there was a shock of sensation, of many, ice and wet and pain. Maxellus screamed soundlessly, born into the terrible cold, pulled from their womb of sustenance. And then there was nothing. Lara sat in the centre of the circular console, confused, not sure what to touch to make the alien ship come to life. She found the controls, at least. There were a dozen flat squares that might be buttons facing the blank front view screen, with two thick handles sitting above them. She'd punched the first square in the line, and it had lit up, a deep red colour. As far as she could tell, that was all it had done. Intuitive. Right. She was about to try the next, when she heard Noguchi's voice coming from the open hatch behind her. I can pilot. Come help. Lara stood and turned, hugely relieved at the sound of the woman's firm voice, until she saw Ellis in Noguchi's arms. Streaks of drying blood on his ashen face. His hair was matted with red. Oh shit, Lara said weakly, and hurried out from behind the controls, stumbling to where Noguchi stood. Together they moved Ellis to one of the benches against the wall, laying him down as gently as possible. Noguchi moved to the controls and slid into the pilot seat, running her hand across the buttons from left to right. Immediately, the ship began to rumble, a steady sound of working machinery filling the faintly unpleasant air. At the same time, the front view screen flickered on, and Lara glanced up at it from where she collapsed, cradling Ellis's poor head in her lap. The picture was surprisingly sharp, the colours muted, the view of the hill's base where the clearing met the jungle. Lara started to look away, to look for a supply cabinet. They have to have bandages of some kind. When she saw the darkness coil come out into the open space. Jess! Lara screamed, staring at the dozens of bugs that were surging out of the trees, at the running black tide of teeth and claws erupting into the clearing. He said he was... Noguchi started, but then Jess was falling inside tripping across the smooth floor to where Lara sat, landing in the seat next to her. Go, go, I'm in, Jess shouted. Hang on, where? Bam, 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 bam. Noguchi whipped around, staring at the still open hatch. Who's shooting? Briggs. I put him in Max, Jess said. Now go. The drones were coming, the dark wave drawing closer, and over the sound of a pulse rifle, Lara could hear their rising screams and could see the front line crumbling, the closest of the trumpeting animals blown back by the steady beat of Max's firing. And then the hatch was closed, and Lara held on to Ellis as the transport jerked and lifted, rising up from in front of the teeming mass, from the sudden river of liquid fire that swept across the dark, insectile bodies. Flamethrower. Lara turned wide eyes to Jess, still not sure that she'd heard right. You put Briggs... Jess reached down and touched Ellis's forehead, brushing the hair away from his waxy brow. Thought he could do some good with the time he has left, Jess muttered. The transport rose for another few seconds and then shot away. <laughs>